Today, we're going over the best settings in Tortoise TTS. And by the way, this isn't actually me speaking. In fact, I have found a way to almost perfectly match my voice, and it's pretty surreal, yet spooky at the same time. I won't be going over how I did this in today's video. I'll save that for another time. So now that it's back to my voice, we're going to be going over some settings in here that I have found to be beneficial for Tortoise TTS generations. So if you haven't already installed Tortoise TTS, go ahead and check out the video that I did on it that goes over it. Also, I have another video that kind of showcases Tortoise TTS as well. In today's video, we're going to be mainly focusing on the settings that I use and what's the difference between these different presets. Unfortunately, I did not run high quality as high quality takes about the same as standard and they both take ridiculously long. And I have found a way that's actually easier to produce better results. So easiest way to do that is to show you some audio samples. Let me go ahead and tell you what I've got. So here we have an entire folder full of generations I've already done. What we're going to be doing is testing the quality of the presets versus the best custom setting. And then we're going to be testing the um, custom sounding audio versus the best quote unquote custom sounding audio or it should be the best. We're going to go ahead and do that and to take a look at what the difference between them is, I'm going to show you the sample size and then the iteration. So this first column right here is going to be samples and the second column right here is going to be iterations. If we go over into the GUI, the graphical user interface, this is samples and this is iterations. You can see that if you take a look at the samples column versus the time, the samples increased the time a ridiculous amount. So 256 took 1,082 seconds, which comes out to about 15 minutes for a single sentence. 96 took 440, so about eight minutes. 16 um, took about 76 seconds, so about a minute. And then you can just take a look at 512 in the second column, and that comes out to about one minute. So let's go ahead and listen to some samples, and we'll let the results speak for themselves. About halfway between West Egg and New York, the motor road hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a quarter of a mile so as to shrink away from a certain desolate area of land. About halfway between West Egg and New York, the motor road hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a quarter of a mile, so as to shrink away from a certain desolate area of land. About halfway between West Egg and New York, the motor road hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a quarter of a mile, so as to shrink away from a certain desolate area of land. About halfway between West Egg and New York, the motor road hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a quarter of a mile, so as to shrink away from a certain desolate area of land. All right, what did you think? I personally think ultra fast and the custom setting are going to be the best bang for your buck. The other ones are not eight or 18 times better than ultra fast or the custom settings. However, I think we can get a little bit faster to still maintain some of the quality. So let's go ahead and now compare the custom settings. So you already heard the 512, but we're going to go ahead and compare these other ones. I won't be playing the entire audio sample so as to cut down on the time that's going to take to go through all of them. So let's just go ahead and do the same experiment with them. The motor road hastily joins the railroad. The motor road hastily hastily joins the railroad the motor road 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 hastily joins the railroad so now you know the motor road hastily joins the railroad all right guys so what did you think I personally think 100 is going to be the best bang for your buck in this case. You're going to have it. You're going to have the generation be relatively affordable, relatively quick compared to the other ones, and you'll still be able to maintain a lot of the quality. Um, I have found out that 100 is my favorite for quality slash speed. Um, if I want to go any faster, I'm just going to go 32. Or if I wanted to do a little bit more quality, I'll probably go 200. 
but there is no huge difference between these and the 512 so I usually just stick with these lower parameters as it produces about the same result and it's much quicker and as you can see this is way faster than the 18 minutes it took for the first generation but there's one more thing I want to show you guys before the end of the video and that is this technique that allows you to get much better quality so I'm going to compare this to the one that took 18 minutes and this one only took about 20 seconds with all of it combined about halfway between West Egg and New York the motor road hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a quarter of a mile so as to shrink away from a certain desolate area of land. About halfway between West Egg and New York, the motor row hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a quarter of a mile so as to shrink away from a certain desolate area of land. So that's the teaser for the future video out of the way. So now what do I have for the other settings? So I'm just going to go over the general settings that I like to do. So voice chunks, I usually like to leave it at zero. You can have this change. This basically just chunks out your audio sample if it's too long so you don't get out of memory. Um, I leave candidates at one. If you do two or three, it'll create two to three different audio files that you can listen to. I usually just leave the seed empty um, and we just went over all of these um, sample area iterations. Um, temperature you can play around. This is kind of how much it varies between um, the text that you're feeding it. So if you have it at a very low temperature, it's going to actually have less variation than say 0.8. By default, ex show experimental settings is going to be unchecked. And some things that make a huge difference for experimental settings is turning on conditioning free. So if you have conditioning free turned off, you'll hear distortion in the background. If you turn it on, that will kind of disappear. Um, and then, you know, you want pause size, the fusion sampler for P, CVVP, leave that, leave this at 0 0.8. And then diffusion temperature, I leave at one. And then length penalty and repetition penalty, you can kind of adjust. Length penalty kind of makes the uh, audio a little bit more um, terse, a little bit more, I believe, enunciated. And then repetition prevents things like it getting stuck on long words. Like if it's just reproducing a certain sound for a certain amount of time, you might want to raise it up to reduce those aberrations. And then I just leave conditioning free K at two. So those are the main settings that I use for Tortoise TTS in general. And that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, I'm trying something new and responding back with shorts. So I think that's a new way for me to be interactive with my audience and to answer your guys' questions in a visual way. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Like I said, I will be coming out with a future one that talks about the hidden method that I am using for that better audio. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys again later. See you later.